Yes, the biggest driver of our long-term debt is the rising cost of health care for an aging population. And those of us who care deeply about programs like Medicare must embrace the need for modest reforms otherwise. Our retirement programs will crowd out the investments we need for our children. and jeopardize the promise of a secure retirement for future generations. But we can't ask senior citizens and working families to shoulder the entire burden of deficit reduction while asking nothing more from the wealthiest and the most powerful. We won't grow the middle class simply by shifting the cost of health care or college onto families that are already struggling. or by forcing communities to lay off more teachers and more cops and more firefighters. Most Americans Democrats, Republicans. and independents understand that we can't just cut our way to prosperity. They know that broad-based economic growth requires a balanced approach to deficit reduction. with spending cuts and revenue, and with everybody doing their fair share. And that's the approach I offer tonight. On Medicare, I'm prepared to enact reforms that will achieve the same amount of health care savings by the beginning of the next decade as the reforms proposed by the bipartisan Simpson-Bowles Commission. Already, the Affordable Care Act is helping to slow the growth of health care costs. And the reforms I'm proposing go even further. We'll reduce taxpayer subsidies to prescription drug companies and ask more from the wealthiest seniors. We'll bring down costs by changing the way our government pays for Medicare.
because our medical bills shouldn't be based on the number of tests ordered or days spent in the hospital. They should be based on the quality of care that our seniors receive. And I am open to additional reforms from both parties. So long as they don't violate the guarantee of a secure retirement. Our government shouldn't make promises we cannot keep but we must keep the promises we've already made. To hit the rest of our deficit reduction target, we should do what leaders in both parties have already suggested. and save hundreds of billions of dollars by getting rid of tax loopholes and deductions for the well-off and the well-connected after all why would we choose to make deeper cuts to education and Medicare just to protect special? Interest tax breaks? How is that fair? Why is it that deficit reduction is a big emergency justifying? Making cuts in social security benefits but not closing some loopholes? How does that promote growth? Now is our best chance for bipartisan. Comprehensive tax reform that encourages job creation and helps bring down the deficit. We can get this done. The American people deserve a tax code that helps small businesses spend less time filling out complicated forms. and more time expanding and hiring a tax code that ensures billionaires with high-powered accountants can't work the system and pay a lower rate than their hard-working secretaries A tax code that lowers incentives to move jobs overseas, and lowers tax rates for businesses and manufacturers that are creating jobs. Right here in the United States of America. That's what tax reform can deliver. That's what we can do together.
I realize that tax reform and entitlement reform will not be easy. The politics will be hard for both sides. None of us will get 100% of what we want. But the alternative will cost us jobs, hurt our economy, visit hardship on millions of hard-working Americans. So let's set party interests aside and work to pass a budget that replaces. Reckless cuts with smart savings and wise investments in our future. And let's do it without the brinksmanship that stresses consumers and scares off investors. The greatest nation on earth cannot keep conducting its business by Drifting from one manufactured crisis to the next. We can't do it. Let's agree right here, right now to keep the people's government open, and pay our bills on time. And always uphold the full faith and credit of the United States of America. The American people have worked too hard, for too long. Rebuilding from one crisis to see their elected officials cause another. Now, most of us agree that a plan to reduce the deficit must be part of our agenda. But let's be clear, deficit reduction alone is not an economic plan. A year and a half ago, I put forward an American Jobs Act that independent economists said would create more than one million new jobs. And I thank the last Congress for passing some of that agenda. I urge this Congress to pass the rest. But tonight, I'll lay out additional proposals that are fully paid for and fully consistent with the budget framework both parties agreed to just 18 months ago.
let me repeat nothing I'm proposing tonight should increase our deficit by a single dime. It is not a bigger government we need. but a smarter government that sets priorities and invests in broad-based growth. That's what we should be looking for. Our first priority is making America a magnet for new jobs and manufacturing. After shedding jobs for more than 10 years, our manufacturers have added about 500,000 jobs over the past three. Caterpillar is bringing jobs back from Japan. Ford is bringing jobs back from Mexico. And this year, Apple will start making Macs in America again. There are things we can do, right now, to accelerate this trend. Last year, we created our first Manufacturing Innovation Institute in Youngstown, Ohio. A once shuttered warehouse is now a state-of-the-art lab where new workers are mastering. The 3D printing that has the potential to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. There's no reason this can't happen in other towns. So tonight, I'm announcing the launch of three more of these manufacturing hubs. Where businesses will partner with the Department of Defense and Energy to Turn regions left behind by globalization into global centers of high-tech jobs. And I ask this Congress to help create a network of 15 of these hubs and guarantee that The next revolution in manufacturing is made right here in America. We can get that done. Now, if we want to make the best products, we also have to invest in the best ideas.
Every dollar we invested to map the human genome returned $140 to our economy every dollar. Today, our scientists are mapping the human brain to unlock the answers to Alzheimer's. They're developing drugs to regenerate damaged organs. Devising new material to make batteries ten times more powerful. Now is not the time to gut these job creating investments in science and innovation. Now is the time to reach a level of research and development not seen. Since the height of the space race, we need to make those investments. Today, no area holds more promise than our investments in American energy. After years of talking about it, we're finally poised to control our own energy future. We produce more oil at home than we have in 15 years. We have doubled the distance our cars will go on a gallon of gas, and the amount of renewable energy we generate from sources like wind and solar with tens of thousands of good American jobs to show for it. We produce more natural gas than ever before and nearly everyone's energy bill is lower because of it. And over the last four years, Our emissions of the dangerous carbon pollution that threatens our planet have actually fallen. But for the sake of our children and our future, we must do more to combat climate change. Now, it's true that no single event makes a trend. But the fact is the 12 hottest years on record have all come in the last 15. Heat waves. Droughts, wildfires, floods all are now more frequent and more intense.
we can choose to believe that Superstorm Sandy, and the most severe drought in decades. And the worst wildfires some states have ever seen were all just a freak coincidence. Or we can choose to believe in the overwhelming judgment of science and act before it's too late. Now, the good news is we can make meaningful progress on this issue while driving strong economic growth. I urge this Congress to get together, pursue a bipartisan, market-based solution to climate change. like the one John McCain and Joe Lieberman worked on together a few years ago. But if Congress won't act soon to protect future generations, I will. I will direct my cabinet to come up with executive actions we can take. Now and in the future, to reduce pollution, prepare our communities for the consequences of climate change. and speed the transition to more sustainable sources of energy. Four years ago, other countries dominated the clean energy market and the jobs that came with it. And we've begun to change that. Last year, wind energy added nearly half of all new power capacity in America. So let's generate even more. Solar energy gets cheaper by the year let's drive down costs even further. As long as countries like China keep going all in on clean energy, so must we. Now, in the meantime, the natural gas boom has led to cleaner power and greater energy independence. We need to encourage that. And that's why my administration will. Keep cutting red tape and speeding up new oil and gas permits. That's got to be part of an all of the above plan.
but I also want to work with this Congress to encourage the research and technology. That helps natural gas burn even cleaner and protects our air and our water.